Good morning everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn them notifications on. You join me today. Uh, I'm just gonna grab a few bits out of the truck here, doing a little bit of work on our sprayer today. So in the back of the truck, I have got a new set of nozzles. Um, in here, I have got some rubber seals. These are our nozzles and these are our nozzle caps so today i'm going to be putting these new nozzles and caps onto our sprayer so we'll take a look at the sprayer in a minute because we've not actually seen that as of yet a bit of an update before we get into this one weather well it looks lovely today it is currently the end of may uh, this time last year silage was done and we've been finished about a week now but at the moment we are not cutting grass we're hoping to cut within the next few days biggest issue we've got it has not stopped raining for the past three weeks the fields mm, a little bit messy and the cows were up until about three days ago in a right mess it is just starting to dry up a little bit here but they are currently uh, down there on the middle field so they're grazing that off uh, what else have we been up to? It's been a while since I last posted. Just not really. Well, we've had loads going on. Oh yeah, you'll have seen in the last video, I was on about the wall. There is the wall now done. We have still got to put the capping stones up on top for it to match like that one. But there's a job that has been completed. It's been a couple of months since I last filmed. Crazy stuff. I've actually been this last week working with Jake and his dad again. We're doing some fencing. I've not been at home and also let's drop them down there pick our other stuff up so here's the sprayer birth but i never know how to say that name so we'll leave that birth i just call it a birth 25 so this is well yeah sat on my tractor we got a 21 meter sprayer very good sprayer actually so today i'm changing the nozzles on here which you will see so it's literally just a case of unscrewing these dropping them off uh, i'm going to take these ones off of here put them onto the side and then put the new ones on now these caps do turn but well we've never turned them what i don't want to end up doing is turning them and breaking them and things so i'm just going to take them it doesn't take long um obviously they would work probably but i just don't want to get into a situation we're in a bit of a mess. Oh, I need to turn the lights off on the uh, on the Ford as well, because I was just getting a trailer out the shed before. I don't think Richard would be very happy if I leave them lights on. So um, Hereford's there. Vaccinated them this morning for black leg and castrated a few. So they are ready to go out. Last, not last week, the week before, uh, we had a TB test. We had three inconclusives, two out of that shed there. They've never been out. Um, one in the milkers, which is a bit of a shame, to be honest. Uh, so in... 60 days i think they'll come back and retest the inconclusives if they go clear we go clear again if not if they're inconclusive again they then become reactors and then we're shut down with tb which is always you know a brilliant thing but at the moment because of the inconclusives we are under tb restrictions which is always brilliant lights are off on that we have also in the last month so last year we did a new concrete yard here and this year we have done this yard behind me so i'll uh, just spin you all around show you this yard i've got like a sprayer block in it at the moment but i thought i might as well talk about this in this video so hang on a moment so here is the yard completed we've gone all the way back to the gateway up here so it goes level with our last cattle shed and it took some figuring out we put a new ramp up into our barrier because it was going to end up too steep uh, we've come all the way to here look the end of this building um it's level and you'll just see the difference in levels here hardly got any ramp there we got a fair ramp leading out that way what we wanted was the water coming down there 
down there and down there and then it runs onto the yard that we did last year and then down the drain in here we have our silage machinery we've even got the mower on waiting to go forage is ready more on that in another video so that's the yard looks a lot different around here now to what it did do i'll have chucked a few pictures in along the way just to show you all what it was like before and that yard over there by the grain store which goes level with the top of the lane there we're also doing that yard so that's oh yeah i forgot to say this these yards were done on a grant on a grant scheme so yeah if you want to know more about that check the video out where i talk about this concrete in over there last year i'll put a link up in top corner now so we might as well crack on and get these nozzles changed right so there is one of the new nozzles fitted they're the old ones so you can see quite a difference the reason we're actually changing these nozzles is because these ones are anti-drift whereas these ones aren't we actually got given these nozzles we went on a well dad went on the course but i sat in on it because it was done over zoom uh, with seven trent and it was basically you went on the three hour course online which was talking about drift and all the side effects of it and whatever and what the damage it can do to the environment and in return you get yourself a free set of sprayer nozzles so a bit of a no-brainer really and you learn something as well so new nozzles at zero cost well these bits were free we did actually have to go out and buy the caps but to be honest you don't mind paying for half it's better than paying all of it so that's why we've gone for these so like i say these are anti-drift nozzles whereas these ones aren't so to be honest with you you don't want drift because when you've got drift you've not got the spray being applied to the plant as you want it so i mean it's not doing the environment any good but it's not doing your pocket any good either because more spray is being lost into the good old atmosphere not what you want so this is a really simple uh just give you a bit of a tutorial on these novels so you've got this bit and this cap so you plug your cap right onto the end of there like so and then you get your cap the other cap thing and slot your nozzle down make sure that it's coming through as it should and then you just pop that through there it'll click in and then in the back here we need something to seal this so we just grab one of our rubber seals pop that in there and then you can come with me along to where we've got to which is here so hold it off pop that on the side and then new one goes on and half a spin and they're on so far we have done one two three four five six seven nine there's 42 on here so wish me luck and there we go there is all the new nozzles fitted onto the sprayer and it is just it looks a little bit smarter for it as well actually they're a nicer nozzle the problem with the ones that were on it before is they were on this sprayer when we brought it and the fan on them isn't a hundred percent anymore they uh, must have worn out a little bit over time but these ones hopefully will have a lot better of a fan so there's all the new nozzles fitted so dad and i are just doing a bit of calibration on this now so we're actually putting these nozzles on just in time for doing the flag leaf spray but with the flag leaf spray we're actually reducing our application rate so usually we spray here at 200 liters to the hectare we're actually reducing to 100 liters to the hectare and i believe it's for better coverage on the flag leaf is that right what? i'm putting less on for better coverage on the flag leaf yeah yeah that's right 
So, for anyone who isn't in the know on this sort of stuff, um, got a chart here with all application rates. So we are on the blue bubble jet nozzles here. So currently what we run the sprayer at is around about two bar on the other nozzles, which gives us 200 liters to the hectare at around about 6.2 kilometers an hour forward speed and a flow rate of one, well, roughly one liter a minute. These are the same. So we've just done a test and at two bar on the gauge there, we are getting around about 925 milliliters. We should be getting 980 milliliters. So we're slightly below. So we're gonna work the calculation back now to figure out what speed we need to do to apply the 200 liters to the hectare. Then we're gonna drop it down to one bar, which then at 8K will give us 104 liters to the hectare, which is roughly what we wanna be applying. So we will uh, crack on with these calculations. Well, dad will look. He's got his thinking glasses on down there and his lovely pink gloves. He just finished milking. Look at, he's loving the gloves. Very trendy. <laughs> So we'll catch up a little bit later on. And there we go, there is the spraying finished. You all have just seen a little clip of dad doing a little bit of spraying on one of our wheat fields. Now you'll see there are a few bare patches in the tram lines. That's because when we did the spraying in the back end, we did end up digging a few ruts in the field. So we've been through them with the subsoiler, it just stops any damage to the baler and combine when we actually come to combine in time. And they were almost at the stage where you couldn't travel in them with the tractor, but we needed to get the autumn sprays applied to control the weed in them fields. It just is cheaper to do so in the autumn than it is in the spring. The sprayer application went perfectly for us. We cut down, as I was saying earlier in the video, to 100 litres to the hectare. It was around about 116. We actually went and calibrated the tractor as well with its speed. And it turns out that on the speedo, the tractor's reading a kilometre an hour. Let's try to think now, sl faster than what it is. So basically for us to travel eight kilometers an hour in the JXU, we actually have to do nine kilometers an hour on the speedo, which is a bit of a pain when you're just going off of the speedo readings. But we know that now for future references. Anyway, that brings us to the end of today's video. Hope you've all enjoyed this one, something a little bit different. And it's been a while since I last posted. Couple more videos to come very soon. We've got the mowing and the silage in. So all to come within the next couple of weeks. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you all in the next one.